Hi, this is Nick Kelly here, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I wanted to discuss a subject right now, which is basically going to cover how to play through these chord changes that I just played over. And I'm just going to touch on the basics for now, just to give you the fundamentals. So first of all, let's just talk about the chord progression. Okay, so this chord progression is essentially made up of the following chords. We got E major 7, then B minor 7, then E7, A major 7, A minor 7, to D7. So altogether it sounds like this. Now the reason I felt that this was an interesting chord progression was because it's not strictly speaking entirely in one key. So therefore we can't play one continual scale through the whole thing. We have to treat each chord individually from a soloing perspective. So the most simple way of doing that is to learn the arpeggio for each chord. Arpeggio is a simple way of saying the notes of the chord played individually. So we got the following notes for E major 7, which is E, G sharp, B, D sharp. And you can learn those over different octaves. Then we got B minor 7, which is that, and then, then E7, then A major 7. Then A minor 7, and then D7, and back to E major 7. Now ultimately you want to find a way of connecting these in a linear way, in a smooth way. So linear is another way of saying smooth. So we, we can go up the E major 7, and then maybe sequence up the B minor 7. So we're Whatever note we just ended on, on the E major 7, we can uh, essentially start from the closest note of the next chord, which would be the D note on the B minor 7, and then we could do the same thing on the E7, A major 7, A, uh, A minor 7, and maybe uh, D7, and then we're back to E major 7. So we get something like this. Okay, so notice I actually spent double the amount of time on the E major 7 and double the amount of time on the A major 7. That's because the chord changes go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. So we want to make sure that we're playing correctly in time to the progression when we're improvising. But to get away from just talking technically here about the arpeggios, Really what we want to do is whatever phrase we play over each chord, we want it to start on a strong note for that chord. So we want to target a specific note of the chord for when the chord is changing. So when we're on the E major 7, for example, I might, for example, start on the 7th, which is... And then when it goes to the B minor 7, to link smoothly into the next chord, because I just finished on this note, I don't want to jump necessarily to a B note. I might go down, for example, to the D note, which is for in the following chord. So I'm targeting that third. So and so on. So I'm always thinking about the next chord ahead of where we are at all times. So that B minor 7, I'm targeting the 3rd. Now to begin with, what you want to do is learn, first of all, where all the roots are. So for the E, for the B, back for the E, for the E7, and 
then A, the A's for the A major 7, and then the A for the A minor 7, and then the D's for the D7. So you can know where those notes are at will. So. So I was in my head there following the progression with the root. Then you want to know where the third is of each chord. So E major 7 is a major 7, so it's a major third, so that's going to be a G sharp. So And then the third, a B minor 7 is a minor third because it's a minor chord, it's a D note. So. To the, back to the E again. Okay, so that was a sample of a lesson similar to what you're going to see on my new website, which I'm going to launch very, very soon. I also have a book coming out on, on uh, Hal Leonard. Um, it's Hal Leonard slash Musicians Institute Press. So it's going to be a book on the blues. And it should be called Progressing the Blues. Should be out next month. I will keep you posted on that. In the meantime, please hit subscribe and I will see you very, very soon. Thanks again.